Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. I am back with a part two to the how to hear God's voice. So we talked about the seven steps to hearing God's voice or the seven tips to hearing God's voice. And today you said, okay, Sharonda, you talked about how to hear God's voice, but how do I know the difference between God's voice and my own thoughts? So that is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about God's voice, the difference between God's voice and our own thoughts. How do we know the difference? So the first thing is it must align with God's word. So um, we're going to go back to that scripture I did in the last video, which was Hebrews 4 and 12 which said for the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of thine heart again this is just reiterating what i said before that god's words is still active and alive so therefore if you try if you are trying to figure out if God is speaking to you or if it's your thoughts, then you need to know that God's word is alive and active and you should be able to find out what you need from the word. So um, the next scripture I want to read is Psalms 119 and 105. And it says, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. As long as as it aligns with God's word, it's going to guide you on the right path. I want to—I I had to write that down. As long as it aligns with God's word, it's going to guide you on the right path. And we should see it as like, just imagine like you walking on a path or you walking and you're trying to figure out what direction to go in like there's a fork in the road and you're trying to figure out what direction to go in and the light is on this side you would want to follow the light right god is guiding us he is the light to our path so we should be following god and 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 following his word it must align with his word so um the second tip i give you is to pray y'all know i i talk about prayer all the time but the second tip is to pray a prayer life should be, our prayer life should become more active. So um, the reason why you, reason why I say that is again that is your communication with God. So if you're communicating with God, then you should be expecting to hear something back from Him. And so during this time of wanting to hear God's voice or um, to know the difference between you know your thoughts. In God's voice or even maybe if you're trying to discern if it's the devil um, you have to to pray and the things that you should pray on is wisdom discernment faith and belief so um, for wisdom the reason why I say wisdom is because we want to make sure that we have the knowledge that we need but wisdom is knowledge is having knowledge but also applying that knowledge do you know what i'm saying so we should be praying for wisdom at all times we should also be praying for discernment so what what is discernment i've gotten some definitions from several people and i kind of just combined what they said to come up with a definition for discernment because you know the to me i just say discernment is a knowing but when i'm when i'm teaching it to somebody i have to be able to teach it where you understand so discernment is the ability of the holy spirit to guide you to a truth the holy spirit is allowing you to see things for what they really are so that is discernment it is when the holy spirit is allowing you to see things for what they really are um so we want to pray for discernment we want to pray and we want to know we want to be able to discern, discern his spirit we want to be able to um discern when he's talking to us and we want to be able to, to discern when he's telling us to do something and go places and whatever it is that he may be telling us to do um the next one is faith we have to pray for faith 
and we have to pray for faith because we want to have faith that he's going to reveal himself that he's going to reveal that yes this is me talking to you and that you should listen to me and you should let me guide you guide you in my footsteps and so the last one is belief and we should pray for belief because we should want to believe that it will happen and that we'll hear from God. And so those are the four things that I say as far as this subject goes that we should be praying for. We should be praying for, again, wisdom, discernment, faith, and belief. So um, number three on this um, topic here is that you should ask yourself a couple of questions, okay? So, one, is it confusing? Is what you're hearing confusing or vague? If it is, it's not God. And the reason why I say that is because God is not an author of confusion. God will not give us anything that will confuse our mind. That is nothing but the devil, and it could be your own thoughts. But it's not God. So, number one is, is it confusing or vague? Number two is, do the thoughts go against God's word? If the thoughts go against God's words, it's not God. It's probably the devil or maybe your own thoughts. Again, it is not God. And number three is, will it lead to sin? And you know, if you say yes to this question, that it will lead to sin, it is not God. Like, God is not going to lead you to sin. He doesn't want you to be in sin at all. So those are three questions that you should ask when... Um, you think you heard something, but you're not sure if it's God. The last thing for me to tell you on this topic is seek counsel from a Christian friend, a family member, or a pastor. And so I want to give you a scripture. Proverbs 15 to 22 says, Without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Which is saying that if we if we seek counsel, if we seek somebody to help us out, then we'll succeed. So we know um, in the real world, we say it takes a village to raise a child. It is the same way in the church. It takes a village to keep somebody on the right path. And so if they... Like with everything that's been going on with the coronavirus, you know, people haven't been going to, um, haven't been going to actual church. Like they've been, you know, watching church online or whatever. And so there are people that are not as strong as others. And so those are people that need to be seeking counsel because those people can keep them on the right path. Uh, otherwise, they're just going to go back into the world. So, um, you should always try to seek seek counsel or find somebody that will hold you accountable. You know what I'm saying? Like, so um, let's say um, you find somebody that you can really trust and you want them to to make sure, like, especially during this time, that your your everything's okay. You're not, you know, in any type of depression or anything like that with everything that's been going on, then they'll hold you accountable. Make sure you're reading your word. Make sure you're praying. Do I need to come over or do we need to meet up? It, like, it's, it's kind of hard to meet up during these times right now. But, you know, whatever it needs to be, that person can be that for you. So we should always have that friend that we can go to or that counselor or whatever it may be, whether it's friends, family, a uh, church member, a pastor, whatever it may be, you need to find somebody, at least somebody that you can go to um, to seek counsel on, you know, hearing God's voice and discerning whether it's God or your thoughts or even the devil. So guys, that is all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you give it a thumbs up and comment, subscribe and share. Love you guys.